elevation change. Trails in the Alps which provide it are easily found. Thousands of surviving ancient paths, tens of thousands of switchbacks, painstakingly built with the square aim of allowing the original users to reach significantly higher or lower ground. The transportation of grown produce to a market town. The shifting up or down of livestock depending on the season. escape to an elevated fortification to ward off invasion. Or most simply, the only way to access drinkable water. It has often been said that these trails almost feel like they were built for a sport. Indeed, the same things that make this alpine infrastructure suitable to ride are the same things that made it suitable for pack laden animals easiest, shallowest and safest possible route down through Stark and otherwise impossibly dangerous topography. However, as individual elements and largely due to their nature and their strict brief to facilitate vertical movement, these trails very often provide no real transportation in the horizontal plane. They don't always take you anywhere other than the base of the mountain you started your descent upon. To move from village to village, from valley to valley, our mountain forefathers built longer, more stretched out trails, with less focus on switchbacks and more focus on getting places. However, this type of trail has survived less well and is harder to come by in the modern day. Why? Because over the course of our industrial history, the morphing of a given itinerant trail into a fastest route track, lane or highway has led to the abandonment of another similar trail nearby. The net result being the disappearance of both trails as single track entities. These travelling corridors of ancient path do still exist though. Today perhaps dormant, obscured by vegetation, covered in rubble and largely unmapped. But therein lies the challenge of conceiving and constructing a genuine journey by single track.